This is a, a real democracy that many uh, countries in the Middle East, in many parts of the world, dream of because there is a lively debate, there is a fierce competition. Nobody knows the end of the uh, end of the race, and uh, Turkish public, Turkish people, will decide at the end who is gonna be the next president. Also, the nature of the parliament at the end. So, this is a real lively and very high turnout, very high participation is expected again in this election because this is going to be a hundredth anniversary of the Turkish new Turkish Republic and we see Turkey very active in the international arena too. So these elections will be uh, a test for a new demo, I mean, new Turkey, new uh, proactive uh, and also a uh, very uh, kind of uh, involved uh, Turkish uh, leadership, Turkish uh, role in the region and in global affairs from Ukraine to many crises uh, and many issues in uh, in Turkey. Of course, Turkey is hit by two major earthquakes and trying to recover uh, from uh, the damages from the uh, uh, destruction of these two uh, earthquakes, which is uh, also uh, very, very well uh, publicized very well known around the world but turkey did not forget democracy because of the earthquake because we uh, we want solutions from the leaders that we choose that's that's a very important thing uh, israel for a for a long time we will come to that but uh, we're also claiming they were the real democracy in the region now they we see they are backsliding uh, from that and there are huge uh, protest and stuff, uh, but uh, Turkey is very active now, very, uh, very much uh, involved, very much participation uh, is expected in this election. And we have four candidates, I, I, uh, if you just meant, and as you just mentioned, uh, four traditional uh, parties, AK Party and the CHP uh, classical Republican Party, which is uh, trying to update itself from the traditional Kemalism, uh, we also have uh, maybe the the CHP former uh, candidate for uh, for the elections that uh, lost in the last elections, uh, and we also have one uh, a minor uh, candidate also that has that's building on uh, on the argument against refugees and somehow what we see uh, maybe a radical right type of. Uh, uh, candidates in the in the West, uh, and we'll see. One is gonna uh, hurt. Uh, I think uh, the the outcome might be uh, decided because of the plurality of uh, uh, of the candidates. The outcome may be concluded uh, in the second round because these uh, these two candidates maybe is gonna make for anyone either Erdogan or Kılıçdaroğlu. To, to win in the in the first uh, first round. So uh, very uh, also we have a new a new situation with this uh, presidential elections uh, uh, is 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 a new thing in uh, in Turkey and the first uh, elections Erdogan won easily, but uh, this time uh, there are uh, major uh, alliances and uh, alignments also encampment uh, with different parties and we have now coalition of six or seven we have also uh, four or five parties also supporting erdogan and also uh, mi minor parties with uh, minor minor uh, with other uh, candidates so this is a new situation and it's very difficult also for the pollsters for polling companies to to anticipate or to guess uh, exactly what will happen because the situation also is changing every day by one candidate joining a force with another one or one party joining another camp. So it is a, diff a different uh, scene right now. So everybody is also trying to understand and trying to uh, align themselves accordingly. I think uh, Muharrem Inja uh, and other candidates will be competing on the traditional votes. Uh, we have a major conservative base, maybe like 60, 65%. We have a liberal base, which is not very much uh, common. We have a also secular base. So 
everybody trying to uh, attract these uh, uh, waters. And uh, in the recent case, of course, the youth uh, free floating woods that are uh, maybe, uh, I mean, seeking or hoping for change, but not so eager, what's not so clear about the direction of the change. So the general discourse about opposition and uh, there should be a change and stuff, but what uh, uh, parties or uh, what changes the parties can offer and can convince these voters. And as, as you mentioned also, some of them, as Kadir mentioned, some of them, they are apol apolitical. I mean, they are not so much interested in politics and they may go to the polls, they may not, uh, they go for the, maybe in the first round, may not go in the second round, or it can be the opposite. But uh, at the end, we, we know the parliament, uh, I think, the joining uh, of uh, Muharrem Inja's party, Memleket party, uh, to, the, to the race, if he can make it, or if even he, he's under maybe the threshold, 7% threshold, if he uh, performs uh, more than uh, the, uh, the threshold, can change the setup in the parliament. Because the parliament will be uh, important, not as much as the president, but it's going to be significant if the Millet uh, coalition uh, or the Millet uh, alliance, if they win the majority or not. So if they, uh, they were acting as a bloc, but uh, recently, uh, we've seen uh, with the outside support by the HDP, which is uh, also aligned with the PKK, many people see that way, and I also see that way. They are kind of a political wing for the PKK. Uh, they are attracting Tur um, Kurdish votes. They have about 10 to 12 percent vote. And if, uh, if you mention this, uh, they are showing clear support for the Millet Alliance, uh, Millet means nation, uh, and also Jumhur means uh, public, Jumhur Alliance we have, and we have also Millet Alliance. Uh, and uh, if they, they, were, they are promising 10% support for the Kılıçdaroğlu, but are they gonna take away uh, as much uh, as they bring? Or they need somehow, uh, I mean, full performance from from the members of uh, to beat uh, Erdogan, which is a favorite candidate, we, he, he proved himself also. He can also uh, pull tricks from his uh, his hat. Uh, we we've seen that adding adding like uh, uh, the son of uh, Erbakan, uh, the uh, I mean historical Islamic uh, party, uh, and now his his son is leading. Uh, 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 Refah uh, again party or Refah revived or renowned uh, the naming uh, still uh, in I mean maybe translation uh, can be different but he he is now taking away the Islamic dimension of the Millet uh, Millet Alliance because there was added parties with them and taking some of the conservative votes with uh, with them to the other side to the other camp now with Erbakan and the uh, uh, showing that uh, they are going to support uh, Erdogan uh, in the elections uh, can make a big difference. I mean, one percent instead of going to this camp and, and coming back to this camp can make a big difference. If, uh, first of all, in just party, Memleket party, if they uh, overcome the threshold, if they do, they, they will have a share in the parliament uh, outside the two alliances, which is, I think, okay, which is a good thing. Instead of we having a polarized parliament, you have independent voices. They can act uh, upon different uh, cases in the uh, if there is any legislation. Uh, plus, uh, if Erbakan's, Erbakan's party also, if they can get over uh, over the uh, over the threshold, again, this is going to impact. If they, like, let's say, if they have 5% each, uh, one of them or both of them at the same time, then you have maybe a kind of 10% wasted votes that are distributed among stronger parties. Again, this will help uh, AK Party first and then the CHP, which are the uh, two major parties. The bigger parties get the advantage. This was designed to bring stability 
because in the 70s, Turkey suffered from uh, from fragmentation in the parliament and lack of uh, stability in the country. So they put this threshold, uh, AK Party lowered this threshold from 10% to 7%, which is, I think, a good thing, especially in a critical country like Turkey. You don't want too much, uh, you know, uh, chaos and you force people uh, to to vote for, the, for their second choice. This uh, threshold forced them to uh, to vote for their second best choices. And which is also okay, which is like why we have also in the presidential election, we have second rounds uh, and people choose their best candidates maybe in the first round and then they have to decide from the uh, two stronger uh, candidates performers in the elections. So overall, uh, the parliament will be decided. I think there will be huge participation. There will be, uh, you know, different uh, discourses and it is that it's a dynamic situation. For example, one a major uh, representative of the EU party, he resigned from his party today. I think it's going to impact even like EU party. He, uh, she, of course, the leader of the party, Meral Akshener, she said, I am not playing with the, uh, with this alliance. And then she came back. The All the po pollsters and analysts say that this hurt her, uh, her position very much and uh, they lost maybe a third of their votes, which is also maybe going to India or other party, other uh, other parties. So uh, the the situation is very dynamic, and every everything counts, every discourse, every small uh, fractions, and it's gonna be in the end uh, uh, if uh, two uh, two leaders come at the end. Maharaj India is betting, and uh, maybe one one last thing on on India. He, uh, he saw the situation, how much uh, EU party lost from this uh, supporting the Millet, uh, Millet uh, it Alliance, Ittifaq, we say, uh, and uh, he, he now he doesn't want to lose everything just by supporting the, uh, so he want to make sure that he, he get enough seats in the parliament at least, and then he, he's going to be a key player, he's hoping. So he did not uh, show a full support or uh, uh, open support for uh, for the Kılıçdaroğlu, which is uh, his former party. And also, it's not clear whether he can carry all the uh, all the uh, followers to to his side because there are so many uh, also grudges and so many uh, other. I mean, many things uh, are said, negative things are said against each other uh, more than Erdogan and India. They, Kılıçdaroğlu and CHP, and they talk bad about each other, criticize each other. So there is kind of a, a legacy that, that might hurt them in, in the second round also. Uh, one thing for the uh, CHP, uh, they, they promised a lot of votes to, a lot of seats to minor parties like Davutoglu, Babajan, and other parties. So uh, we, we already know, and also India is showing a big competition uh, to to chip away uh, some of the CHP votes. How they are going to distribute? There will be some uh, some major internal, I think, internal skirmishes or internal internal uh, uneasiness within the CHP because there will be small room for winning any uh, any seat. So this will cause some headache. Uh, in the design, in the uh, assigning the parliamentary uh, candidates, uh, a big headache. But of course, Kalishtarola, as the second point, he uh, he focused on winning the presidential uh, elections. So he sacrificed almost, uh, I mean, a significant role. He might lose also the majority uh, in the parliament as as CHP. So uh, this is a risky gamble for uh, for Kalishtarola and the CHP, but. They they see it is worth it because they will get uh, the presidential system and they don't care about the parliamentary system and they, I don't think anybody uh, either will have the majority to change to the parliamentary system. Also, any new president elected, he will be willing uh, to go back because he will enjoy the the authorities and the the power the the president has in Turkey. So they won't be uh, very. Uh, eager to to change or to to switch back to the parliamentary system.